Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. I have the last review for the last episode I had left of the original classic 1990s Goosebumps TV show. Um, this is the last episode I have to review before I'm done. This is the last one I've never seen before that I've watched for the first time as of today. Of course, I watched the entire trilogy for the first time today after hearing some pretty rough things about it for a while, and deservedly so. Um, here we are. Goosebumps Trilogy, uh, Part 3, Escape from Carlsville is the title of this one. All three of the episodes are on this Trilogy Trilogy set, whatever it is. About an hour long if you watch all of these back to back. Monster Blood 3 cover, as I've said numerous times. So far I haven't been thrilled. <laughs> With trilogy. If you haven't seen the previous two reviews, you probably don't know that. But part one and part two, uh, part one started out relatively decently and then it fell apart. Uh, part two, I'm not a baseball sports guy, as I said in my review. You guys, you guys already probably saw that. So that one kind of sucked. Like just in general, I think that one sucked more than part one. Part one wasn't great, but part two sucked more. Uh, this one, part three, Escape from Carlsville is to me a lot better. Now at the end of part two, we actually had the younger brother of the kid that I got the wrong name for. Apparently the older brother that we followed throughout part two with the baseball theme was named Matthew. The younger brother is named Todd. I did not know that, so I messed up my previous review. <laughs> Just so you know, but I'm not re-recording that because I don't care enough to talk about that. Uh, Todd is actually the kid, the younger brother that we're focusing on in this episode. Now. Each of these trilogy episodes premiered one week after the previous one. This one premiered on May 9th of 1998. It is in Season 3, Episode 21. Is this the finale? No, it's not. The next one was Teacher's Pet. Anyway, uh, this is a very mixed bag. <laughs> Let me start that off. Uh, of course, Carlsville, if you don't know, if you haven't seen these episodes, are basically all three of these parts of the trilogy, trilogy, I keep trying to say one or the other every time I turn around. They're all focused on a small set. You ever had, like, your grandparents collect, like, the Walmart toys that they can have of, like, uh, they're not really toys, but they kind of are adult toy stuff. Essentially of, like, Christmas decorations, Christmas towns, that kind of thing. Basically, there's one of this called Carlsville that Jessica found in the first episode. Uh, the two brothers stole it in part two, or at the end of part one, and then they have it in their house. And at the end of part two, the younger brother got sucked in again, just like the previous two kids did. And uh, he is essentially celebrated in Carlsville uh, by the plastic mannequin toys that are in here, particularly one who is played by uh, the guy who looks like the kid or the, the villain from Lazy Town, if you've ever seen that, uh, Daniel Cash. <laughs> And I think he's even better here than he was in the previous two episodes. I do want to say that it's not great, but it's better than he was in the previous two episodes. I also want to say I think I like this episode more than part one and part two. It's kind of tied with part one, but just slightly above or below, somewhere in there. It'd be one or the other. Um, this one is not great. Let me say that up front. But it's not horrible <laughs> like part two was. Part two was very, very flawed. It had a couple of moments that were nice. Most of it sucked. Anyway. Part 3, wasn't thrilled to watch it. Was I impressed? Not really. Uh, was I happy that it was better than what I expected it to be? Yes, but isn't that the case for like anything we watch in the world? Like, do you really expect it to, to suck? You know? Do you really want to go watch something that sucks? I mean, really honestly, think about that. Anyway, so I went into this not really expecting much. And when I got in there and I started watching it and saw how like the whole Carlsville town is celebrating our young fellow here named Todd. Uh, the kid is good, by the way. Turns out he's the one who plays Spike on X-Men Evolution, not the kid playing Matthew. I messed that up as well <laughs> in my review of uh, part two. This kid's good as an actor. I liked him. I thought he did pretty solid, just like the other two kids from part one and part two, Jessica and uh, Matthew. I think he did just as well as they did being younger than them. It was kind of surprising. Uh, the adult characters are pretty fine here, I guess. Everybody tries. There's not really much of a script here to work with. Most of it's just adventure stuff. A lot more of this episode takes place in Carlsville 
than part one and part two. Part one and part two kind of have a beginning that builds up to characters ending up in that place. A good five minutes out of like a 20 minute episode end up in the real world before they go to Carlsville. Most of this takes place in Carlsville and then the brother, uh, Ta or Matthew, Matthew the brother from part two and the girl Jessica that's their friend are looking for this younger brother and then the parents are looking for them after they get sucked in. It's kind of just a, a crazy zany little wild thing. I do want to say this one is the creepiest out of part one, part two, and part three of the trilogy. It, it's got some eeriness to it, some a uh, little bit of reference to Alice, Sweet Alice, if you've ever seen that. That kind of surprised me a little bit. Uh, it also reminds me of <laughs> the Santa Claus 2 with Tim Allen. Uh, it was bizarre. Very bizarre. I don't really have much to say about this episode. Uh, the music is a lot better. The music is straight up 1990s what you would consider filler music for shows that they, they didn't have the soundtrack, they didn't want to do anything. You just kind of had an electric guitar doing a cool, not really blues, but kind of blues, kind of modern blues type of soundtrack score solo thing. That's very heavy in here, and it's great. It's definitely the best scored of all three of the trilogy episodes. Uh, the plot, like I said, is kind of spooky. Uh, I don't want to tell you much more about, aside from the town themselves actually celebrating Todd being a part of them, being like the citizen of the town and whatever. Uh, it's got some weird sci-fi moments to it compared to part one and part two, but I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it, but not like in a way that I'm like invested, super invested. It's just, it's fine. It's fine and it's okay. Uh, part one, part two, very lackluster. This one's not great. It's not really good. <laughs> it's just fine. Um, I really just, if it seems like I have nothing to say about it, it's because of how bad part two was, how fine part one was, and how fine this one is. It just it, There's not much to talk about. It's just okay. Um, overall, I don't hate this one, which is nice. I'm glad if it's the last episode I've never seen before to review here on the channel before the Disney Plus show and whatever, whenever that's supposed to happen, uh, if it's going to happen. I'll believe it when I see it. And then when I see it, I'm going to cry because they're going to ruin it. <laughs> Um, I'm very pessimistic about that show. I've said it forever. I don't want it in Disney's hands, and I don't want it in Netflix's hands, and it somehow ended up in Disney's hands. It's gonna suck. Just admit it. Uh, <laughs> just accept it. I'm having to talk myself into that, if you haven't noticed. Um, anyway, this is fine. This is fine. I have no real complaints about it. It's fairly watchable. Um, it's not amazing, you know? It's just fine. By the way, it's directed by William Fruitt, who did uh, a lot of stuff that I've talked about on the channel before. In case you happen to be here watching this review for whatever reason, this happens to be your first ever review, and you've heard about William Fruitt never in your life. Uh, he did Attack of the Mutant Part 1 and Part 2, Welcome to Dead House Part 1 and Part 2, Stay Out of the Basement Part 1 and Part 2, uh, all kinds of stuff that I've talked about. Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes, uh, Deep Trouble. He's done a ton of stuff. He's great. I love him as a director. And here, it's not so much that he has a lot of directing skill stuff. With this one, oddly enough, as good of a director as William Defrew it is, <clears throat> a lot of this is the sets. A lot of this is the eeriness that he comes with on a lower budget. Even though this episode has a very modest budget compared to most Goosebumps episodes. And mind you, in case you don't know, the trilogy are not based on any books or story ideas. They're just straight up written on a script for this show. They were never adapted from books which is different for this. Now, you do have some episodes in the series that are almost entirely different from the actual book themselves, whether it be tonally, whether it be event-wise, anything like that. You do have some that are very different and some that are just straight-up bad. Uh, part two, I consider probably possibly, possibly, I don't know yet, maybe one day if I ever do the ranking video, which, by the way, won't be happening anytime soon because I totally forgot to rank these episodes as I was reviewing them over the last three years. Just because it was so spaced out, I figured at some point... With four seasons of TV, I could sit down and rewatch these at some point and do, you know, a, a video ranking later on in the future. Maybe like a year from now. I don't know. But uh, for now, <laughs> for now, I'm not thrilled <laughs> with what I saw here. Um, this is a this is a rough one, a real rough one. You know, it's kind of a shame. Uh, th this one's fine compared to most, but part two is really rough. Trilogy is not what I expected it to be, is what I'm trying to say. Trilogy, I kind of had high hopes for. I kind of hoped it'd be better, and uh, it was not. <laughs> I'm kind of sad this is the last one I ever get to review from the original series that I had never seen before, but it is. 
you know, what do you do? So, that is my review for Goosebumps Trilogy Part 3. Uh, what is it called again? Escape from Carlsville, I think? Something like that. Let me open up my phone on IMDb. Yes, it is. <clears throat> it is fine. It's decent. Uh, the kids acting are good. Or decent. Whatever. You know? The parents acting are good. Villains got an okay performance, but it's like... It's lazy town, you know? Anyway, if I had to rate part three on a five-star basis, I'd give this a three out of five stars. Again, it's kind of tied with part one of what the best of the trilogy could possibly be. I don't really know. I'm not thrilled with it, if I'm being honest with you. It's just, it's fine. It's fine, and it's a little bit better than part one and part two, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, what are your thoughts? What's your favorite part of the entire trilogy? Have you watched all of the Goosebumps episodes ever? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you love them all? It's my real question. Do you hate them all is another question for you. If you're watching this, you probably don't hate them all. There's probably at least one, maybe two, that you like. Anyway, what do you think about this show? What do you think about this original series? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Put all that down below, guys. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. And uh, put all your thoughts and comments down below about this particular episode compared to part one and part two. What do you think about those? I'm going to upload my reviews for all this stuff tonight in just a moment. So hopefully you'll tune in for that as well. Um, as I said, I want to re... <laughs> push for this. I will not be doing a ranking video for the episodes yet. It will be a long time until I do that, just because I had to space out these reviews for so long. You know, if you knew me, and you knew my reviews over the last three and a half years, or whatever it's been, I jump from series to series. Like, I might read some classic books, I might jump to series 2000, I might jump to GYG. I jump around all over the place to try to finish up different things, read what I want to read, kind of get certain things out of the way, read some bad or poor books and get them out of the way. It's just how I go about it. You know, I, I like to get some of the stuff I'm not excited to read out of the way that might be surprising sometimes. So I spaced this out so much, I figured at some point I could go ahead and just sit down and really rank these all together. <clears throat> but that's going to be in the future. I don't plan on doing that anytime this year. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the year. I'm going to be busier and busier with things I want to watch for Christmas time and Halloween time, birthday stuff, all kinds of stuff. Vacations. Dear God, I need a vacation. It's coming up soon. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, anyway, what are your thoughts and everything about this stuff? Put it down below. Hopefully you'll tune in for all the stuff I have coming this weekend, guys. I have the big OG 62 classic series ranking video where I just finished up the original 62 books from the original series. I will be ranking all of them. Not only the books themselves, story-wise, but the actual covers in a separate video as well, too. So I have a lot of content coming out tonight and this weekend. I hope you'll tune in for all that. I may possibly... I'm not sure yet. I may possibly go ahead and do a review for the entire show, like the series itself. I don't know yet. I'm thinking about it. Not really sure. I might hold that off as well until later on to do the big ranking series. I'm not really sure. There's no reason not to do it now with all the influence and interest I have at this current moment and just all the exposure I've had over the years to this show. Uh, I've had a lot of time <laughs> to think about it for three and a half years. Uh, not including the ones I've been watching since I was a kid, and some of those same VHS tapes that I currently own, along with DVDs I've owned forever. Anyway, I may or may not do it. I don't know. I'll give you a video at some point whether I decide to do it. Uh, anyway, what are your thoughts on everything? Put it down below. Thank you for watching, guys. I'd love to uh, discuss the show with you more, if I can, down in the comment section. Thank you for, wa for, <laughs> thank you for watching. Three out of five stars for me for part three of the trilogy. Trilogy overall, what would I rate the entire trilogy as a whole? Everything factored in together. Is it really worth watching is the real question? Not really. <laughs> Being a Goosebumps fanatic, I have to. But uh, as a whole for the entire trilogy, I might give it like a 2 out of 5 stars. I know two of the episodes factored out to like a 3. Mathematically, I don't care about mathematics. I'm just saying as a, as a worthwhile watch... It still rings at about 2 out of 5 for me if you if you include all three episodes together. They have their moments. They have some good stuff. A lot of it sucks. <laughs> you know, one-third of this is entirely about sports, and I don't care about that. It sucks. Anyway, put your thoughts and comments down below, guys, about my childish video. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Goodbye, and see you more this weekend, God willing. Thank you.